At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the approaches of natural language processing, differentiate the approaches from each other, and appreciate the significance of learning natural language processing approaches. If you are a language researcher or a natural language processing practitioner, there are two things that are most likely happening while you are doing your task or project. So the first is that you are just fine working with texts while disregarding the meaningful relevance of the written form to the mental representation of the language. Let me write that for us to better understand. So written form, written form, and the mental representation. Okay, of course. So when we say written form, so we have our alphabets that represent, or when you connect the different sounds of the alphabets, then you would form different words. So mental representations, so these are what these different sounds are represented in our memory, in our brain. Okay, so, and then we have the second, which is you may probably want to make connections between the prior knowledge and the present experience so as to present language model that is practical and at the same time culturally and personally meaningful. So with this, we're going to learn the approaches to natural language processing. So let's first have the first approach which is the, the rationalist approach. So what is this approach all about? So this kind of approach emphasizes the idea of genetic inheritance. I'm sure everybody knows what genetic is so from the word genes. Of course you know that. So it means that a significant part of the knowledge of the human brain is already designed and fixed while human being is developing inside the womb. So let me write that. It has something to do with being designed and fixed. That means while you and I were developing in our mother's womb, our brain is already designed and that the language structures, the knowledge of what language we're going to speak is already designed and fixed in our brain. So this sounds so interesting that you and I would like to really appreciate more and we would be amazed of how wonderful it is that this kind of situation being designed and being fixed are happening inside the womb of our, of our mothers. So maybe you would like to ask, what makes the proponent of this approach think like this? So according to them, if you are going to look and listen to children, they can learn something as complex as the natural language despite the fact that they have very limited inputs. So, of course, when you listen to some young children, um, one year old, two years old, maybe three years old, then you would be amazed that they may not be able to speak complete sentences and complex, complex sentences based on the adult standards, but at, but at least they can speak and they can convey certain messages that they would like to tell to us, right? So because of this ability, they believe that parts of a language are innate in us. So which means that it is hard-coded in our brain at birth. I love this word. It is hard-coded. Okay, so it's, it's very mysterious. It's very amazing. Now, let's go to the second approach, which is called empiricist approach. How is it connected to this? Are they related? Or if they are related, are there any differences between them? Let's find out. So this kind of approach points out that a human brain is already possessed with cognitive abilities at the time of 
our birth. So it means that we already have the initial structures in our brain. Let me write initial structure. So when we say initial structure, it has something to do with the structure of the language. Like uh, when you are building a house, then you could, before you make some kind of finishings, there should be some kind of framework and foundations. So our brain is like that. So at the moment that we were born, there were already some kind of initial structures that are in our brain. So let's find out more. So what are these initial structures for? What do they do? So these initial structures are the reasons why we uniquely organize and generalize certain sensory inputs in different ways. So it is the reason why we prefer certain ways to others. So contrary to the nationalist or the rationalist approach, so here in empiricist approach, we assume that the mind does not begin with a detailed set of principles and procedures that are specific to the different components of language and other cognitive domain. So when we say cognitive domain, it is composed of morphological structure, case marking, and others. So as we go along with our course, we would be able to understand what this morphological structure is, morphology, the markings or case markings, and other concepts that are related to understanding language processing. So this empiricist or empiricist approach suggests that a baby's brain starts with general operations for association. Let me write that. Association. Then pattern recognition. So we have pattern pattern recognition and generalization generally generalization so these operations association the pattern recognition generalization provide the child the ability to process whatever is input into him for him to be able to learn the detailed structure of the natural language so with these initial structures, our brain would be able to associate, recognize, and generalize whatever is input into our brain based on our experiences, based on the world, the environment, the environment where we are. So if we're going to analyze these two approaches holistically, then we can find a certain direction. We are moving towards to deeper learning of the natural language. So this is actually happening now. So we have moved from empiricist machine learning viewpoint or application and approach to deep learning. After all being said and done, let's try this. What are the approaches to natural language processing? Compare the approaches from each other. Please write your answers in the comment below so we can discuss properly and we can learn from each other. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.